Hello everyone, this is Paul from SpanishWithPaul.com and welcome to this Monday's Spanish lesson. If you think about it, one of the most basic ways that we use language is to describe things. So we describe people, experiences, we describe our feelings. Now to get you started, we're going to do something which is really quite simple. I'm going to give you the key vocabulary necessary to describe location. Because after all, what could be simpler than that? Describing where something is. In Spanish, we can do this with just a few key phrases, and I'm going to give you lots of examples and lots of practice. As you know, I always try to make you think things out for yourself, because that's the only way you really learn. That's all coming up next. If becoming fluent in conversational Spanish is one of your goals for this year, then consider clicking the link above to download my free course books that go along with all of my YouTube lessons. You can also subscribe to my channel to get a brand new Spanish lesson from me every single Monday. So with that out of the way, let's get started. The first thing to establish when talking about location is that it is will always be esta. For example, the word for here is aquí. So to say it is here, it would be está aquí. How would you say it isn't here? No está aquí. Now, está means it is, and we use it all the time when referring to location. However, está also stands for he is and she is. So all three is contained with esta. It is, he is, and she is. Normally, it's clear in the context of the conversation you're having which one you're referring to. However, there's also ways to make it explicitly clear. So we could say, he is here with él está aquí. Or she is here with ella está aquí. So let's run through those. How do you say it is here? Está aquí. He is here. Él está aquí. She is here. Ella está aquí. The phrase in front of in Spanish is enfrente de. You can see how two words got contracted together here. We have en frente de, in front of, but you'll commonly see it contracted together like this into one word, en frente de. To say me in Spanish is me. It's the exact same sound, just a difference in spelling. How would you say it's in front of me? Está en frente de mí. What about he's in front of me? Él está en frente de mí. How would you say she isn't in front of me? Ella no está en frente de mí. The shop in Spanish is la tienda. We have T with enda. La tienda. How would you say the shop is in front of me? La tienda está enfrente de mí. Now, how would you say he is in front of the shop? Él está enfrente de la tienda. What about she isn't in front of the shop? Ella no está enfrente de la tienda. To say behind in Spanish is detrás de. This makes a nice little group. We have enfrente de for in front of and detrás de for behind or behind of. How would you say it's behind me? Está detrás de mí. 
it's behind her. Está detrás de ella. It's behind him. Está detrás de él. How would you say the shop is behind him? La tienda está detrás de él. What about this one? She is in front of me and the shop is behind her. Just pause and think it out. Ella está enfrente de mí y la tienda está detrás de ella. To express next to, in Spanish we have a few options, a few variations. So what I'll show you first is the easiest one. This is to express is next to me. This would be in Spanish, a mi lado, literally to my side, a mi lado. How would you say she is next to me? Ella está a mi lado. She isn't next to me. Ella no está a mi lado. How would you say he is next to me? Él está a mi lado. Now what about this one? He isn't next to me. He's behind me. Él no está a mi lado. Está detrás de mí. Notice that in this example, we only needed to use él once. Él no está a mi lado. Because after that, it becomes clear who we're referring to. Está detrás de mí. So this way, we can avoid redundancy by using él twice. It's just not necessary. Do you remember how to say in front of? Enfrente de. Now, how would you say, she isn't next to me, she's in front of me? Ella no está a mi lado. Está enfrente de mí. Here, once again, we didn't need to use ella twice, just once, because after that, it was clear who we were referring to. Let's try one more. He isn't in front of me. He's behind me. Él no está enfrente de mí. Está detrás de mí. So far, we've been using a mi lado for next to me, but it can also mean by my side. What's the word for always? Siempre. Now try to say, she's always by my side. Ella siempre está a mi lado. If you put the word siempre in a different location in the phrase, you would still be understood. But in this position, it sounds most natural. Ella siempre está a mi lado. How would you say, he's always by my side? Él siempre está a mi lado. It's curious that in English we have a lot of words for near, near to, nearby, close to, close by, and so on. In Spanish, all of these are covered with just one. Cerca de. Maybe you can see the pattern so far. We have Enfrente de, detrás de, and now cerca de. To express something very simple like it's nearby, it would be está cerca. How would you say it isn't nearby? No está cerca. What's the word for here? Aquí. Now, if we wanted to say 
it's close by here or near by here, so forth, it would be está cerca de aquí. Here you can see the cerca de being introduced. So we have está cerca de aquí. How would you say it isn't near here? No está cerca de aquí. What about it's close to me? Está cerca de mí. It isn't close to me. No está cerca de mí. Once again, what's the word for the shop? La tienda. Now, how would you say the shop is near to here? La tienda está cerca de aquí. How would you say she is close by the shop? Ella está cerca de la tienda. The word opposite when referring to location in Spanish is opuesto a. Here we have o followed by puesto. Notice as well there's no de. This one breaks the pattern. It goes to a. So we have opuesto a. How would you say opposite me? Opuesto a mí. Opposite her. Opuesto a ella. Opposite him. Opuesto a él. Now how would you say it's opposite me? Está opuesto a mí. She's opposite me. Ella está opuesto a mí. She's opposite him. Ella está opuesto a él. He's opposite her. Él está opuesto a ella. What about this one? It's opposite the shop. Está opuesto a la tienda. The market in Spanish is el mercado. To say supermarket would be supermercado. Now this is a masculine word, so how would you say the supermarket. El supermercado. You'll also hear this contracted to simply el super, but we'll continue using the full version supermercado just to keep practicing our pronunciation. Let's try this next one. The supermarket is opposite the shop. How would you say that? El supermercado está opuesto a la tienda. Do you remember how to say behind? Detrás de. Now how would you say the shop is behind the supermarket? La tienda está detrás del supermercado. Notice that here we have a contraction because we have de el supermercado. In common usage, this gets contracted to simply del. So this happens with masculine nouns. La tienda está detrás del supermercado. How would you say the supermarket is in front of the shop? El 
El supermercado está enfrente de la tienda. Here we have no contraction because this is a feminine word, la tienda. It's just a little thing to be aware of with this formula. How would you say the supermarket is close by? El supermercado está cerca. Now try, the supermarket is near to here. El supermercado está cerca de aquí. How would you say, she's nearby? Ella está cerca. How would you say, she's next to me? Ella está a mi lado. Now say, she's always next to me. Ella siempre está a mi lado. If you're serious about learning Spanish and want to become conversationally fluent, my main course, Spanish with Paul, is live and available for you now. Inside you'll get my complete course, none of which is available on YouTube, and also my personal attention to make sure you achieve conversational fluency in the fastest time possible. In short, if you like my free lessons on YouTube and the results they're giving you, then you'll love what I have for you inside the main course. You can click the link on the screen now to find out all the details. So with that said, I look forward to seeing you again in my next video.